I'm going to step out on a limb and tell you that Phil Schmidbauer, Senior Director of Analytics and Solutions, ODW Logistics, is back on the phone with me. Phil, are you there, my friend? Michael, I'm here. It, it awesome. took this long for my bald head to break the camera. I apologize. <laughs> That's excellent, brother. So we were talking about the third, you know, coming up the rest of the year here and what shippers need to be doing and how they need to stay active. Don't get lulled to sleep, right? And you got the changing market with diesel prices, et cetera, fuel prices that are going on. What do people need to be looking at? What do they need to be watching, my friend? You know, the one thing that I would say to keep an eye out for is as new prices continue to drop, um, the spot market's going to keep dropping or, or has dropped so far, and, and that will eventually pull down the, the contract rate. So what I would tell people is if you're under contracted rates right now um, and you've committed to those, just be careful. You, can, you don't want to you don't want to break commitments that you've made to customers or carriers. Um, but I would say keep an eye on your contract rates as we start to see spot rates fall because we, we do think, a lot of people in the industry think that those rates aren't going to last long. They are going to start to come back up. Um, who knows, maybe around November, things would things will start to happen differently than what they're happening today. Not sure why that might be a, a good date, but usually election timing has something to do with a lot of things mm. in the markets. But, um, you know, be diligent. Keep an eye on that. Don't don't get too um, don't 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 go back to all your carriers on contracted rates right now and say, hey, the spot market's dropping because you do want consistency in those rates. So just be cognizant of what you're doing. So don't ruin partnerships over this, but, but stay diligent. Again, fill up those trailers, make sure that you're using, being efficient in what you're doing, um, and, and you should be in a good spot going forward. Phil, I think that's a, that's a good point, is to kind of not jump the gun on some of these decisions that you're making, right? Don't break those contracts, but have that kind of flexibility to go back and forth. A lot of that flexibility comes down to the communication that you've got with your shippers and with your carriers, if you're looking at it from a brokerage perspective. When you're sitting here as a broker for the second half of the year and you're saying, you know what, I'm going to give my all to my shippers and to my carriers here, what is your number one piece of advice that a broker should think to really be doing here for to make sure that they're insulated and doing a good job for the last half of the year? Yeah, you know, from a from a brokerage standpoint, it's a, it's always a healthy balance, right? It's talking to your customers. We try to educate our customers. When a customer comes to us and says, hey, we want you to give us a rate that's good for four months, like we talk to them about that and say, look, here's what you're asking us to do. And just be, you know, we try to be transparent with customers. You want me to give you a rate that's good for four months, but the, the market could come down, it could go up. We, we don't know, right? So the longer that your customers ask you to, to let's call it burden, burden their rates with a little bit of, of risk mitigation on your, your behalf, um, be diligent in talking with your customers about what's going on. Brokers have to protect themselves. If they're being asked to commit to something, they've got to be able to to protect themselves from market fluctuations. So, um, you know, just be diligent and be be open with customers on on what what they're asking you to do and what that's going to mean from a rate standpoint. And that's what I that's the policy in business I like to to bring forth the most is honesty and openness and just explain to people what 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 a customer is asking you to do is going to be reflected in a rate and a commitment level. Yeah, it is. I mean, that, that understanding that you need your vendors, regardless of what business you're in and what those vendors might be. But in this situation, a shipper, you need to have those carriers uh, be, be, uh, be healthy, right? And, and so that yeah. negotiation is incredibly important. And that's just something that I don't necessarily think is involved in a lot of RFPs at times, is recognizing that those carriers need to be healthy. Is, is, is that something that really they'll be is getting more emphasis in, in RFPs? Um, I, I would like to tell you, yes, it's getting more emphasis. I mean, look, I, I still believe we live in a, in a business world that's built on relationships. Um, mm -hmm. But as people go more, and you hear all the time about these technologies where you can book a load through a technology now, like how, how much relationship is in that technology when you're booking through an online computer, right? I mean, yeah. Um, you know, so there's 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 a little bit of there's a little bit of loss there through technology. I still believe it's going to be maintained, right? So there's still a lot of trucks that get booked today based on based on relationships. Um, we have relationships with carriers, so I, I think there's I think there's a lot of it still left. Um, I wish I could tell you it's more and more common, but as I see technology has come into the into the marketplace, I feel like I feel like people are are, dis, are you know undervaluing the the relationships of of a handshake and working with people that you you align with um, from a cultural standpoint, from working together and building, building those relationships. So I, I, think, I think there's still a lot of it out there. I don't think it's going to be gone or disconnected. I don't think that these technologies are going to get rid of those personal relationships, but um, I don't know that I would say it's becoming more and more common. 
So, Phil, when you're looking at the back half of the year for your, for a shipper, and oftentimes putting on your prognosticator hat and saying, okay, it's time to really reevaluate our transportation spend and think about it for the next year when you're talking about the end of your current cycle. If you're a shipper right now and you're looking at maybe reevaluating some of that transportation spend and taking a hard look at your transportation budget, do you think that there's anything that should really stick out to a shipper right now where they're saying, you know what, we need to focus on this for the upcoming year or take a look at this one, this specific sector of things and maybe do things differently coming up next year? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Because if you look at, if you look at rates in general, people are saying, well, they're going, rates are going low, they're dropping. Well, if you look at it year over year, part of this is a correction from, from COVID area era rates, right? I mean, mm -hmm. part of this is we're coming down from one of the, from the largest peak we've ever seen in transportation rates here in, in the United States. So part of it is a, a little bit of predicting, okay, how much, uh, do we really think we're going to go back up to where, where COVID rates were, which at the time, everybody's like, man, this is ridiculous. This can't be the new norm. Um, so we have that debate in here internally all the time of when we're looking, when forecasting out, how much of this is just a, a correction in the market getting us back to what rates are normally versus what was a COVID era um, uh, type of dynamic. And, and I, don't, I don't really have a good prediction on that. I would hate to give anyone any comfort level. I believe that things are going to correct themselves a little bit back down to normal rates what we might have seen in in 2000 pre-covid or or 19 you know you know 2000 sorry 2000 uh 2020 or 2019 uh era rates um and and then and then go back to a little bit of normal there but but who knows tough to predict yeah it seems to be where it's it's starting to settle a little bit when you look at those spot rates on a daily basis they're kind of hovering in that 190 195 x fuel uh, sitting sit around in, in that place right now. So that's interesting. I, I tend to agree with what you're saying there, Phil. I, thank you so much for this for this input and sticking around and being diligent and getting through to us. We apologize for those uh, issues to you and our fans out there watching. Sorry, Mom. Uh, right now, I guess we're going to toss it over to a carrier break next, right? 